Aidan, good morning. Good morning, uh, Nick. How are you? Very well. Good to talk to you again. Uh, you sort of made brief mention earlier in the week that you might run all of the horses that are still engaged in the Kazoo Derby, and I think it numbers eight. Is that is that still what you're thinking? No, I don't think I said that, Nick. I just said that we're all in, and uh, and uh, obviously everything that was in was possible at that time, you know. So, like, obviously they'll do a little bit of work Monday or Tuesday, and uh, and then we'll. Uh, try um see what the work meant and uh, and then the lads will have a speak amongst uh, to talk amongst themselves and see what, 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 what they want to do really thanks Edmund when when you say they'll do a little piece of work Monday Tuesday what what will they do what will that piece of work I, in, entail I, I, they'll, they'll do a good strong piece it'll either be Monday or Tuesday and we'll probably decide that this evening Nick so it'll, it'll be um and then and then they'll obviously go through their tests and the next day that'll be their bloods and their scopes and all that kind of stuff, you know. So and uh, and then we'll analyse the work to see what the work meant, and then uh, then the lads look at all the information, and then they make the decision. Really. So those, do you find it's absolutely crucial at that point to make sure that they are worked quite intensively, so that you know what sort of level of fitness they're at, and you you can understand how well they can they can come out of that. Yeah, well, I, I suppose so. Exactly, but I, I suppose it's always. Uh, to see how they are, or what stage they're at, or or, or what's between them, or, or whatever, you know. So, and and uh, and that's what uh, listen. That's why we do those works, kind of the, either the last or the second last uh, piece. And then those would all be timed, and so you'd get all the data, and you'd be able to see exactly what they'd done, as well as what you can see with the eye. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's exactly. So, like, obviously, there'll be mostly separate bits of work, but you can put them all together then, and and. Uh, and to see what it all meant, really. Who do you think's taken the the biggest step forward from his last run of your of your Derby contenders? I'm not sure about that, Nick. Like we're we're happy with where they all are at the moment. Uh, I, I suppose they they're, they're they're all at different stages. And they've all come from different uh, uh, um, backgrounds of training. If you know what I mean? Like uh, the horse on the Dante was a different uh, than Bolshe Ballet, and you know they they were all at, at kind of different stages, really. Uh, you mentioned the horse who ran in the Dante first, so I'll start with him. That's high definition. He finished third in the Dante. He was staying on nicely at the end of the race as well. To what extent had you really had to pull up with him in the in the preceding weeks? Yeah, no, sure. I was far from ideal. We were a little bit in limbo land, obviously, from the first blood and came back wrong. So we kind of had to keep him taken over and not to put him under any pressure. Uh, we, we didn't medicate him, so his bloods were done every day. And um, and they just slowly came back themselves for some reason. You know, what we we weren't really sure why, um, but but they did. And, and when the time of the race came, his bloods were back perfect, really. Um, but like obviously, we we had to. Uh, we'd usually be pushing our foot down on the throttle, and, and and we didn't. We just had to take it back up and just let him uh, let him uh, cruise along for uh, four or five days. Now we had a we had a chat back in, I think. November, December, we had a bit of an end of year wrap up. And at that time, we talked quite a bit about high definition. And you were talking about him as though you felt he was probably the most talented horse of his year group in your stable, the most talented colt of his year group in your stable. Is that something a bit of you still believes? I know, actually, obviously, like, uh, nothing has changed to change any of our, uh, any of our um, opinions on any of them, really. Um, Obviously, he was always only going to have two runs, and uh, and, um, and and that's the way it was. And, and the, the horse that uh, won in Leperstown, uh, he was always going to have his runs, and he was always going to travel to France for experience. Um, um, and just in case that he needed to to travel and fly um, uh, this year, so that that was all done before the, the before this yes, uh, season started, really. So, um, and uh, I suppose it. We were always going to fly uh, high definition if we could before the derby, just to give him the experience of that. So um, it, it kind of always, it all, it all just kind of went uh, as we were thinking and hoping that would go so far. As for Bolshoi Ballet, is it? Do you believe that what he did in the Derrinstown is now the single standout piece of form going into the derby? Actually, I never kind of believe anything really. Um, and or think anything, but all you can ever do is is get them prepared for their trials and run them, and then hopefully that they'll they'll uh, sh- show you uh, 
plenty in their runs, win, lose or draw, and, and then you hope that they come out of their runs, and then and then you hope that they're training from their last trial up to the, the big race goes smooth. Aidan, just from, from your point of view, from a horseman's point of view, can you compare and contrast these two horses, Bolshoi Ballet and High Definition? Um, um, say, say that again, Nick, sorry. Can you, from, from your point of view, just looking at them every day, can you compare those two horses? Can you compare and contrast them as, as what types of horse they are and, and sort of ha- how you would look yeah. at them? Yeah, they're, they're two fine big horses, uh, two very well-made horses, I suppose. Um, um, high Definition is, is probably... Uh, uh, has, has a longer horse than than uh, Balche Valley. Balche Valley is a fine big horse, close compact horse. Where um, High Definition is a little bit more scopy. Um, but they're they're two fine big, uh, strong horses. Um, I, I suppose um, we 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 only wanted to give High Definition two runs at the, at the most last year um, for that reason. And and uh, and the Balche was obviously able to take an extra run and, and travel and go to France, you know, so they, they, they're like, they're two big, 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 fine, big uh, horses, really, and that's the, uh, like, I suppose I would sum both of them up, really. Should we just assume that Ryan is going to ride Bolshoi Ballet? I'm oh, sure, listen, I don't, I don't know what they can, we don't ever put Ryan under any kind of pressure about that until obviously he has to make his mind up time, but like, obviously, uh, everything has went well with Bolshoi Ballet, um, up, uh, up, uh, so far, up from each run to run, you know. So, so and like uh, obviously, if you were in Ryan's position, I, I would imagine you're, you're probably thinking that way. But that could change very quickly, and, and like nothing's set in stone until he makes that decision. Really, what what would you do if it was your decision? Well, at, listen, at, at the moment, like everything has went very smooth and well for Balche Valley. and uh, obviously, uh, high definition is preparation was a little bit interrupted. So um, um, I suppose Ryan will make that uh, call and set and, and uh, uh, Balcha has won the two trials that kind of um, are kind of uh, kind of uh, the kind of most important trials here in Ireland and, and he hasn't travelled and, and that you know and and uh, and, um, and then I suppose High Definition has went and ran a very good race in the Dante so I suppose we'd like to see what's going to happen now uh, either either uh, Monday or Tuesday and, and then see what's going to happen but I suppose at the moment it's very hard to to uh, overlook a Balshai Valley. Yeah, will Frankie ride the, the, the one that Ryan doesn't? Well, I, I suppose we have to see how many we have in uh, first and what way that's going to all fall really. But would he certainly be in your in your plans given that he's had such a wonderful record over the yeah, last couple of years absolutely. riding? Absolutely, we'd be delighted if, if um, obviously, delighted always to have Frankie. And Aidan, of the horses that perhaps aren't getting quite so many headlines as the big two that I've mentioned, which do you think could take a step forward and surprise perhaps a few people in the manner of a, a Serpentine or a Wings of Eagles? Um, I, I, I'm not sure really, Nick. Um, I, I suppose the two horses we've been talking about are kind of the, the two standout horses at the moment, you know, and, and they always have been really... So you you think that they are significantly clear of the of the other six that you've got entered? Yeah, and listen, obviously you're never sure of that until they go a mile and a half. Um, but like uh, everything they've done at the moment is, has been very uh, very impressive to us. Anyway, uh, do you, do you think you'll run Van Gogh? Uh, he has an option of going to France on the Sunday either. So I suppose that lads will make that decision themselves there in the week. But it, there's a definite chance that he could go to France. And um, Sir Lamarack is a horse that people have, have talked about, at least come through a different route. Um, has he done well enough, do you think, to earn himself a place? We think he has. And, like, obviously, he would have an option to go to, to, go to Ascot either. Um, you know, he, he was, um, he's done everything we've asked him and it was very impressive his last day as well. But he definitely would have an option to go to, Fra- or to, go to Ascot instead either. OK, let's just talk about the Oaks quickly. Aidan, again, you've got a, a stranglehold on the top of the market here with Santa Barbara, the Guineas fourth, and Snowfall, who I thought was terrifically impressive in the in the Musidora. Uh, you know, again, it, similar sort of question, really. In your own mind, I know you you spoke so warmly about Santa Barbara in the winter. Is she still your is she still your number one? Yeah, we were always very excited about her, and uh, we were delighted with her run in the Guineas. Like obviously, the first run over anything further than a mile so it's going to be very interesting she she's a filly has a lot of class 
and uh, we're looking forward to see see what's going to happen with her. Like, listen, everything seems well with her at the moment, and she has to do her last bit of work as well. But um, listen, we're, we're looking forward to her and, and uh, seeing what's going to happen over a mile and a half, Nick. This is the key point, isn't it? Because you've got a, a, such a familiarity with this family. The two half siblings have won Breeders' Cup races over um, not quite a mile and a half and over a mile. Do you see in her a filly who is likely to get a mile and a half? I, I think possibly. Um, she, she's a Camelot filly, uh, and Camelot usually do stay. It's, it's usually a good influence for stamina, but she is big and powerful and classy, um, but usually does very good fillies can can be like that and and they they can also get the mile and a half well as well and snowfall was devastatingly impressive in the in the musidora i I don't often think you're surprised by much aiden but did that surprise you at all i don't uh, i don't think so nick we we always thought the world of her last year if you see she ran in all the big races but just never got together and we were always a bit disappointed with her every day she ran and i think her last run last year was in the fillies mile so we always thought the world of her. Um, um, obviously, maybe the, the winter under our belt and stepping up in, in distance just maybe brought out what we used to see at home with her, really. And there's been quite a bit of money for Divinely this week. Is that well-informed, do you think? She's, um, she, uh, she's obviously a sister to found. She won a Group 3 last year, and we always liked her a lot as well. She had a very nice run in Lingfield, and I remember Ryan was very happy with the Lingfield run. He just said the pace was very slow, and it was just a sprint up the straight. And, and her work has been lovely since. So I suppose that's where just her, her figures are all coming out, like just very good, really. OK, and so just to, just to sum up, it's unlikely that you will run all eight in the derby. So, what do you? What sort of number do you think you'll you'll settle on? Yeah, Nick. I, I honest to God, I, I, like I just said, I would imagine we won't be running them all, um, and because they all have different options, like I said to you. But mm. it'll be it'll really, uh, really go down to whatever the lads will decide themselves. Um, we'll, we'll give them all the information, and then they'll make the decision. Um, and uh, whether that's one, two, three, four or five or whatever. But like what you said, I couldn't see them all running. Yeah, because you need to keep options for France, etc. And you've got a nice group of horses in the, in the Oaks to go to war with as well. Um, Aidan, thank you very much for your time this morning. Best of luck. We'll see you at Epsom. Appreciate it, Nick. Thanks very much.